Today, I'm using wire, wood, and paint to tell the story of those moments when I finally find the courage to let go of my comfort and allow myself to take a chance. Leaving the safety of the nest can, at times, be a terrifying experience. All right, I'm starting off salvaging this canvas that I accidentally cut a hole in in a previous video. To repair those holes, I'm using some scrap black canvas, fraying the edges to keep any lines from showing through the canvas. And now I'm gluing them in place with fabric glue, putting parchment paper down to keep things from sticking to my cutting mat. And I did some research and found this is supposed to be the best stuff. And luckily we had it laying around, but it's a little old and thick. So I ended up having to scoop it out and spread it with scissors. Now this doesn't have to be a seamless job because I will be mounting objects over this area. Otherwise you can use filler on the front side. For the branch, I'll be using a branch from my neighbor's tree that blew down a few weeks ago. Before working with it, I actually do need to wash it and bake all the creepy crawlies out. While that bakes and dries, I'm building the nest. Now, I'm starting with a base of speaker wire that I just kind of swirled into kind of a web. And then I'm giving it some structure with this 18 gauge copper wire, which is also going to be the support for the entire nest. And I'll show you that in a bit. And I'm looping this jewelry wire through to kind of sew it all together. For the nest, I made these rough random grids using more of the 18 gauge wire. Everything is just twisted together and crimped in place with the pliers. So I'll speed through this part, but the idea is basically making a kind of dome and then wrapping more speaker wire around the outside. Now all I do with that speaker wire is remove the insulation, untwist it, kind of fluff it a little bit, and then wrap the dome. You'll notice that I also saved the entry area for last, and that's just because I didn't know what I wanted it to look like until I could actually see the rest of the nest. So I just made another grid the size I needed and tied it into the rest of the nest, wrapping a second layer of speaker wire around the dome. What I don't show you is that I later added some wire braces to the outside, and that holds all the speaker wire in place. And you'll see those as I add the spiral around the door. For the spiral, I measured the first one as a template and then just cut the rest, kind of varying the lengths, but generally keeping them similar. Now using more 18 gauge wire, I tie them in place as I spiral them around the entrance. And this is actually pretty easy as long as you can keep one hand on that spiral and not let them fall off like I did a million times. Okay, and then I'm just finishing this off with a smaller spiral that I made off camera. Now this was a test piece, which is why you don't see me making it. It really was not a pretty process. 
All right, with the canvas ready, I can now paint the background. Now I want the sculptural elements to stand out, so this is just gonna be a simple field and sky. As with all my painting though, I add a lot of texture. The twist today is that I'm waiting until the paint is somewhat dry, almost kind of a gelatinous feel, and then feathering over it with a fan brush. This is just barely touching the paint, cooling up as little as possible. This will calm down the motion and energy in the background so it doesn't compete with the objects I'll be mounting to it. Now the sky is a loose mix of light blue and white. The field is a loose mix of light green, a dash of burnt umber, and then a kind of a larger dash, but still a dash of dark. And I'll put all those colors in the description if you're interested. And then this is what I'm talking about, quickly and lightly feathering down that texture. All right, with my branch freshly baked and cooled, I can now assemble the nest. Now getting that branch through was a pain and I actually did have to go back a couple of times and readjust those wires to fill in the gap. But with that assembled, I can mark the mounting locations using this clay needle tool. Now, once again, I'll be using 18 gauge wire, pushing it through the back like big staples. And then I just twist those ends tightly around the base ring on the nest. And that's again, the ring that I was talking about earlier, which is the foundation to that whole nest. Finally, I'm holding the branch in place with a wood screw. Now, admittedly, at this point, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted that character on the front to look. I tried a few ideas, trying to keep the wire vibe, but ultimately I landed on carving a mini artist mannequin. Before carving, I sketched out the face, hands, and feet, and then went to carving with my Dremel tool. Now, I'm shaping the body with a sanding wheel, and while I do have the strength of 10 regular men, my pecs are not nearly as chiseled as this guy's. So I'll be cleaning those off. And then I like to believe I have a flat stomach, so I'll leave that. I'm using the same sanding wheel to shape the feet into kind of more of a human foot shape. And then for the hands, I'm using a cutoff wheel with a light, light touch. A small grinding wheel helps me kind of shape those eyes and mouth. And then finally, I'm back to the sanding wheel to clean up the form overall. I tried a few colors, starting with something closer to my skin tone, which didn't read well against the copper wire. So I went to black as kind of more of a silhouette. At this point, I thought I was gonna be happy with it. So I already drilled and then added in the support wires. But after seeing it in place, I went to a medium gray and that's the one I'm happiest with. After attaching my avatar, I painted a flock of birds to kind of complete the story of leaving the past behind. Since this piece is intended to be my personal story, I'm using a standard metaphor as a way to help the viewer more easily understand what I'm saying. Now, I know there are a lot of artists out there who would say I should be challenging the viewer, 
But one, I've spent the last 20 plus years as a designer, working to make things easier for people to use and understand. So that's my mindset here. And second, I'm not making a statement. I want them to understand how I feel and they cannot read my mind. So that's just how I choose to tell my story. I highly encourage you to make your art in your style and tell your story in your way. After all, you're the best person to judge how your story should be told. Hey, thanks for watching. Now, originally, I thought the little guy on the front that's supposed to be me was a little kitschy, but having been around the painting for a few days, I actually like it. I think it works. And then the flock of birds further tying in the story of having moved on and leaving things behind, but they also visually balance the piece because originally I had mounted everything a little bit too low and I felt like it was distracting from actually seeing the story I was trying to tell. Anyway, if you like this video, please consider subscribing, maybe tell a couple of friends, and without further ado, here's the piece.